Let's go please to Romans, the uh, fourth chapter, and uh, verse 19. Romans 4.19 says, And being not weak in faith, he, Abraham, considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he was not what? He was not weak in faith. So you, obviously you can be. He wasn't. Verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. And that's insight into uh, what's going on when you are weak in faith. Stagger is the same idea as waver. Waver. Back and forth, back and forth. And uh, he didn't do that through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. So he wasn't weak in faith, he didn't stagger or waver, but he was strong in faith. We've been talking about exceeding growing faith. How that our faith can grow and what's involved in that happening. If you would go with me to the book of uh, Luke. Luke, the eighth chapter. Let's see, I need to do it a different way. Go, go with me to Mark, and we'll, we'll make our way over to Luke. Mark 4, then I think we'll go to, uh, to Luke. In Mark 4, we begin in verse 35. It says, the same day when the even was come, Jesus said to them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had, let me back up. Faith is not built on nothing. You'll see, we, we've already read this in this series. And if you haven't been with us uh, before, you can get the previous parts. Go back to the uh, Word supply or go online, it won't cost you anything. And we we're talking about tithing earlier. There's a recent series we did called Tithing Today. Just three short messages. Oh, I shouldn't say short, short series. <laughs> three messages. And, uh, I, well, I don't want to short you. <laughs> and uh, you can get that. It won't cost you anything, no, no charge. And uh, if you're serious about this, go, go with us and look at all the scriptures and let the Lord show you what's right on that. Um, but faith is not based on nothing. How do we get faith? Anybody know? How does, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. One translation talks about the anointed word. And uh, you, you, you can't just have faith in God based on nothing. You have faith in God to do what you heard him tell you. That's the source of your faith. Well, you'll see, we, we've read this, but you'll see a little bit later that he expected them to have more faith than they did in this situation. Well, how could he reasonably expect that? Because of this right here. <laughs> Back up to 35. He said to them, how does faith come? He said to them, let's try. Huh? <laughs> let's go halfway and drown. Huh? Let's see what we can do with this. What did he say? Don't, don't be afraid to help me out. What did he say? 
let us, us is who? Now if he'd have said, boys, I'm sorry, but some of you ain't going to make it tonight. (laughs) Then you couldn't have, nobody could have had faith because you don't know who it is that's going to make it and who's not going to make it. (laughs) That's why if you preach, it's God's will to heal some and some it's not. Nobody can have faith from hearing that. We don't preach the new birth that way. It's God's will for some to be born again. Some it may not be. We don't preach that. Why? Because it's His will. It's not His will for any to perish. Right? And so He said, let us. Who's us? Who's us? You and me? All us-ins. Let us do what? Pass over to the other side. That's all you need to have strong faith that we are all going to make it from here to the other side. My father in the faith, uh, Kenneth Hagin Sr., who's in heaven now, uh, when we started flying, they got their own plane. He'd say that almost every time. Almost every time when they'd start the engines and the doors shut and we start moving, he'd just say, let's pass over to the other side. <laughs> what does that mean? We, we ain't going to crash and die on takeoff. We ain't going to make it halfway and perish. We're going all the way. Is that right? Somebody likes that. You're going to use that for yourself. Say, sit out loud. Let us pass over. To the other side. Every time you get on a commercial airliner, you ought to say that. Right? Or a ship or whatever the case might be. Train, either one. But anyway, that's what he told them. There is no word of God void of power. His, his words, his instructions, his commands are enablings. It enables you to believe it. It enables it to happen. Just like he... I mean, this is the same source of light B in Genesis. So this should be reason for strong faith. Now, it, as it turns out, that's not what happened. They didn't have strong faith. Keep reading. When they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Keep going. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. You know, just because the Lord told you to do something doesn't mean it'll always be smooth sailing. You may run into one of the worst storms you've ever seen in the middle of doing what He told you to do. And one of the first things the enemy will come and say, Oh, you missed God. You missed God. You shouldn't even be out here. No, just because you encountered some resistance doesn't mean it wasn't God to do it. And the storm was great. The waves beat into the ship until it was now full. How many know that's, that's bad? That's right. Boats full of water. Not good. Keep, keep going. And Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship asleep. Asleep. Well, he's in the same boat they're in. Right? The wind's blowing and howling. The uh, waves are crashing. The boat's full of water. And he is asleep. Faith doesn't fret. It just doesn't. Faith doesn't worry. Faith doesn't fear. Faith doesn't fret. It just doesn't. So they came and they wake him up. And they said, Master, carest thou not? Now we don't talk like that. We'd say, don't you care? Don't you care? That we perish? Verse 39, he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Jesus spoke to things. He spoke to trees, 
Is that right? He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the waves. He spoke to the dead, dead bodies. Is that right? I, I, I know one of the occasions it said that Jesus came in and they told him about Peter's mother-in-law that was delirious with a fever and asked him to minister to her. Jesus came into the room where Peter's mother-in-law, I guess, is unconscious or from this situation. And it said, he rebuked the fever. Didn't say, he's not praying. He's not asking the father to do something. He's not rebuking Peter's mother-in-law. He rebuked the fever. And when I read that, for, I hadn't seen it for some way or another, but when I saw it for the first time years ago, I thought, now hold on, hold on. He's talking to a fever. Then I thought, can a fever hear? Can a fever hear? I read the next phrase. It said, and it left her. I thought, yeah, yeah, pretty obvious. Fevers can hear. And then I got excited. If fevers can hear, headaches can hear. High blood pressure can hear. Infections can hear. Cancer can hear. AIDS can hear. Is that right? Oh, friends, we hadn't been speaking to stuff enough. We hadn't been speaking to things with authority. Many have just been begging God, begging God, begging God, and not going to believe anything unless they see change. There's no faith in that. That's walking by sight. Something's bugging you. Speak to it. Amen. Hmm? Yes, sir. Speak. Don't call it your bum knee or your bad elbow. If you decree a thing, that's how it'll be. Right. Speak to it and say, listen to me, kidneys. You're my kidneys, and you're going to work right. Function normally. Lungs clear up in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to receive that for yourself right now. Right now. Right now. Lungs, everybody say it out loud. Lungs clear up in Jesus' name. Somebody needs to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Hallelujah. Say it again. Lungs. Lungs. Clear, out. Clear out. Clear up. Clear up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Now take another big breath. All right. <coughs> we need to do it one more time. Say it out loud. Lungs. Lungs. Clear, up. Clear up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus now take a big breath. Big breath. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't just act like you are a helpless victim to anything that comes along. Follow in the steps of the master. Somebody said, yeah, but Brother Keith, that's Jesus. He's doing this as a man, anointed with the Holy Spirit. And he said, if you believe on me, the works I do, you'll do also. Didn't he say that? Did he say it or not? And greater things than these show you do. He said, peace, be still. And uh, can the wind hear? Yes. How you know? <clears throat> and the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Anybody believe this really happened? This is really, if you don't believe it happened, then you don't believe any of this. Hmm? It's either true or it's not. If it's not true, you're wasting your time to be here. But if it is true, the rest of the world needs to get in here. Is that right? Or wherever. And Jesus turned to them, and their mouths are hanging open. Come on, put yourself in, in, in that situation. The, the wind was raging. The waves are slapping the boat. And, and all at once now, it's just perfectly calm. Dramatic. And they're looking at each other, their eyes that big. And Jesus said, why were you so full of fear? How is it that you didn't have any faith? <laughs> so somebody missed it here. Is that right? Why did he say that? What do we need to learn from that? They should have had more faith than they did. 
Why? Where would they have gotten it? Let us pass over. Right? See, they be, at one point they became full of fear. They ain't going to make it to the other side. They're going to drown out here. But the Lord didn't say that to them. Hmm? The, our faith will be tried. Our faith will be tested. And when it is, it'll be up to us whether we decide, well, maybe it's not going to happen. I know the Lord said it. I know that I got that in prayer. I know he showed me that in the word. But you know it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. And get full of fear. Or you can say, no, I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. The Lord said this. And that's what's happening. And that's how this is going to turn out. Could they have done that instead of, see, not only did they not trust what he said and believe it, but they've been with him for a while. They've seen him do things like this. He authorizes them and sends them out. And they exercise authority over sickness and over wrong spirits. They could have done this. It's why he's correcting them. They should have let him finish his nap. You know when you're having a really good nap. And somebody disturbs you in the middle of it. And you had to get up and do what they could have done. There it is. You're not so happy about it. You're like, what? I was sleeping good. <laughs> There's got to be some of this here because elsewise he would not have looked at them and said, why? Why did you do this? Why are you so full of fear? Why? How is it that you got none? <laughs> You've been traveling with me for months. You've been hearing all these good messages. You have seen the, the, the word work. You have seen faith. And yet, doesn't look like it's going to happen. And not only... Do you not even believe God? You don't even try to exercise authority. You run over here and shake me and ask me, don't you care? <laughs> Questioning the Lord's faithfulness to what he said and his love. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, this is not good. None of this is good. <laughs> People look at it and go, well, that's anybody would do that. There's, you can't help from doing it. No, no. That's why it's here to show us don't do this. You don't have to do this. There is something better than learning from your mistakes. It's learning from their mistakes. Right? <laughs> we love you, Peter, James, we love you. But we don't have to keep doing what you did. They, they would tell us that. What do you think they'd tell us right now? Hey, it's in the Bible. It's been there for a long time. Take advantage of it. Learn. Learn. How is it that you, you don't have any faith? Verse 41, did they get it or not? And so they feared exceedingly. No, boys, no. No. And they said to one another, what manner of man is this? They still are fixated on him. This is where most of the church is today. Yeah, Jesus could do that but not us. Hmm? And so, is it okay to fear? Yeah, fear, fear exceedingly. He just got through correcting them about fearing. It's not time to fear more. It's time to stop. And yet, the enemy has convinced many people they cannot stop. That they can't help but worry. They can't help but doubt. They can't help but fear. And that's one of the biggest challenges that the church has to overcome is if you believe that lie you're deceived you're stuck the truth is they didn't have to yield to fear and panic no. That's right. no. That's right. nor do we That's right. they didn't have 
to forget what he told them about passing to the other side. They could have remembered it. Couldn't they? In the middle of that situation, it could have, I mean, now you're going to feel it. I mean, with the wave slapping you in the face, and you're going you're gonna to feel it. You're going to be tempted. Everybody say tempted. tempted. You're going to be tempted to worry. You're going to be tempted to fear. You're going to be tempted to doubt. But can you get a grip? Can you look at each other and go, now hold on, no, no, no. He said, he said, let's pass over to the other side. So we are going to make it to the other side. We're going to make it. I just don't know if we're going to make it. No, we are going to make it. Well, what makes you say that? He said. He said. So whatever he says, you say. You say. Now, go with me to where I asked you to go before that. Anybody remember where it was? Luke. Luke. Luke 8 is where I want you to go. Luke 8. We're making progress, saints. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to make it to the other side. Yeah, we are. We're going to make it from where we are to where we need to be. And then we're going to make it from there to the other side. The other side, run our race, finish our course, and hear, well done, good and faithful. Sir, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over much. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Talk about some shouting. There's going to be some serious, if loud noises bother you, you're going to have to get over it because... <laughs> Luke 8, are you there? This is what we call the parable of the sower. It could be called the parable of the seed. But Jesus taught about the sower went out and sowed the seed. And he said later that the seed is the Word, the Word of God. And the Word is incorruptible seed. And he talked about that the sower sowed the seed on four different types of ground. Wayside ground, stony ground, rocky ground, thorny ground, and good ground. And then he talked about the results of the seed being sown on these four different types of ground. Now these four types of ground correlate with four kinds of people. We are the ground that the Word's being sown into. And uh, only one of these types of ground got any fruit, got any results. Hmm. One out of four. Don't sound too good, does it? But it's because the enemy comes to steal the Word. But here in the 13th verse, I just want us to emphasize this part today. Jesus said, they on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word with joy. Joy is always an indicator. If there's real faith, it'll be accompanied with joy. There's no such thing as being depressed over something and being in faith about that thing. If you're in faith about it, you're not depressed over it. Hmm? If you're in faith that you've sown your seed, the Lord's heard your prayer, and the money is coming to you to pay your bills, what is there to be depressed about? But if you're upset and depressed, what does that mean? You're not convinced it's going to happen. Hmm? So faith is accompanied by joy, with joy. But these have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Now, the Lord quickened this to me just uh, uh, yesterday and today. I've seen this before, but not as clearly right here. People have read temptation as being tempted in all kind of varied ways 
but the temptation is specific to the situation. Primarily, they're tempted to doubt, tempted to cast their confidence away, which is why they only believed for a little while, and then they quit believing, they cast their confidence away. The temptation was primarily to doubt. And it is a temptation. We are not helpless victims to worry. I may say this another 50 times. Why? Because most Christians don't believe this. They do not believe this. They believe you can't, depending on the situation, if it's bad enough, you can't, nobody can help but worry. People believe that. But it's not true. Faith is a choice. Worry is a choice. If we can choose what we look at, listen to, think about, talk about, then we can choose whether we believe or not. The devil will tell you you can't, can't help it, can't help it. I don't care what they say. I've tried. I try not to worry. I try not to get upset, but I can't help it. You're believing lies. You're believing lies. The problem is you keep going back to looking at the wrong thing, thinking about the wrong thing, talking about the wrong thing, listening to the wrong thing, and you can't do that and stay in faith. You feed your fear, your fear is going to grow. We need to starve our fears starve our doubts and feed our faith. Feed our faith. Hallelujah. That's one of the reasons we come to church. Right? That's what, that's what I'm doing uh, this morning. <laughs> Feeding. That's the shepherd, the under shepherd's job. Lead and feed. Well, feeding what? And with what? Not feeding you hamburgers and hot dogs. Feeding you the Word of God. To, to do what? To feed your faith and nourish, be, make you nourished up, built up in the words of faith. Well, you can get all stirred up and begin to become uh, uh, expectant and get a little joy and get a little peace before you get out of here. But as soon as you leave here, if you get to looking at the problem and thinking about the problem, it's going to be like letting air out of your balloon. And then your fear is going to get stirred up again. I, uh, I had the privilege of working at Brother Hagin's ministry at, at their healing school for a number of years. And uh, I'd see this. People would come who were uh, considered terminal, incurable, and uh, sometimes it took two or three weeks for them to begin to make progress. Uh, and sometimes I saw, I've seen in a week from Monday to Friday, somebody that couldn't even stand up, barely breathe, that's functioning pretty good by Friday. And just miraculous, miraculous. And then we break, and then next Monday they're back, and, and they barely can move again. I saw that too many times. I thought, Lord, what is, what is going on here? And, and he, I saw it in a time of prayer. I don't mean an open vision, but inside myself, I saw it. It's, uh, the scripture said in Romans, to be carnally minded is death. Yes. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes. If, you're looking, if you're looking to the Lord and you're focusing on Him and contacting Him, life's coming into you. Life. And even though you may be all shriveled up, it's like a flower. You'll just begin to bloom as you focus on Him and look at Him and listen to Him and think about Him. But then if you turn and look at the problem and, and, and you, you let somebody feed your fear, you'll start to shrivel up. You start to get weak. It just the opposite occurs. That's what happened with Peter when he was walking on the water. As long as he looked at Jesus, he walked above it all. Is that right? But when he began to look at the waves and the wind, he began to sink. Did you hear that phrase, began to sink? Began to sink. 
And, uh, and, and I asked Brother Hagin about it. And he said, yeah, he, in his ministry, he said there's been a number of people that if I could have kept them with me, they would have lived. But their, their family, even though they loved them, pulled them down. Because every time they'd go back, they asked them 20 times a day, how do you feel? How do you, now don't give me that faith stuff. How do you really feel? And crying and feeling sorry. And I know people don't, they don't mean to, but they're feeding that person's fears. And if you're not, if you're not getting your faith fed and all you're getting fed is this bad report and this junk and these feelings, you're not going to stay up. Can you see this, friends? Can we choose what we listen to? Friend, especially if, if you're dealing with something that's uh, a significant challenge in your life and somebody calls you and they want to talk a bunch of fear and unbelief to you or they show up, you need to be strong. Yeah. And you need to say, no, no, I don't want to talk about that today. I, I, I don't need to hear, yeah, yeah, but no, no, yeah, buts. We're not talking about this. Well, that, that's, that's rude. Do you want to stay alive or not? You need to be, even though people don't understand, well, well, honey, I just want to know, and I just, no, no. We're going to talk faith, and that's all we're going to talk. We're going to talk the Word. We're going to talk healing. We're not going to talk incurable and terminal. We're going to talk all things are possible. We're going to talk with long life. He satisfies me. We're going to talk that which feeds our faith. Can we choose what we listen to? what we look at, yes. what we think about, yes. then we can choose faith or doubt. Right. That's, right. That's, That's right. how you choose it. Yes. By what you look at, listen to, talk about. He said they believe for a while and in time of temptation they fall away. And verse 14, he said that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard they go forth and are choked with what? Cares. Cares. Or it could be riches and pleasures of this life. Anything that fills up your mind and thoughts and life and attention other than God and His Word and His things. Cares, and that that has to do with anxious care, we call it worry, Mm -hmm. can choke out the Word. That's right. Out of your life. But that on the good ground. How many want to be good ground? The good ground are they which in an honest and a good heart, having heard the word, what do they do? What do they do? Keep it. My son, attend to my words. Climb your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. If, if, if you keep it, you got to keep it in front of you. I said you got to keep it in front of you. That's why you need faith buddies. You need to be a part of a faith family. Because hmm? there's people that don't understand these things, they'll try to talk you out of it. They'll tell you why it can't happen. They're, they're, people, they, they don't even know what they're doing. They will push you to accept defeat. Would you, ju- you just need to accept your condition because that's why you have psychological problems and you can't let. <laughs> you need to accept that you'll never be any better. You need to accept that you're poor and you'll always be poor. You need to accept that you're broken and injured and you're going to be broken. That's just who you are, but you can love me for who I am. No, you can be healed. You can be restored. You can be blessed. You can prosper. You can be victorious. But you won't be if you listen to all these naysayers and let them fill your ear and mind with unbelief. It's a choice. What I listen to. What I look at. Hmm? And the reason we're talking about this is because they were, verse 13, They believed for a while, but in time of temptation, they fall away. Mm -hmm. The enemy will tempt you to doubt. He will tempt you. I know some years ago, some of the songs that the Lord gave me, I got them in times of uh, 
temptation. The, the song, uh, Thank You, Father, for Meeting My Needs. Yes. And if you don't know this and you want to know it, it's available. You won't have to buy it. It's free. <laughs> but uh, th- back in 81, in our little apartment in the rough part of town, we, I didn't have tuition money. I didn't have gas money. And it looked like our ministry training was going to be over before it got started. We didn't know anybody in town. I sat down on that little, I, I would say second hand, but I think it was more like ninth hand <laughs> couch. <laughs> we had to get a furnished place and it was well used. And uh, I sat down on that little couch. And just begin with my guitar and begin to say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for meeting my needs. See, I got a choice. Yes. Yes. I can cry. I can feel sorry for myself. I can try to get hard and go, well, I don't know why it happened, but people wouldn't help me and this wouldn't happen. And that means you're going down. Yes. Or. I can remember that the Lord said so many words. I'm going over to the other side. I'm going. He didn't say go out there for a few weeks and fail. Hmm? There are no God ordained failures. I know people try to make them up, but no, no. God's not into destroying, He's not into defeat, He's not into failure. He's just not. That's right. And so I sat there and I began to play a few chords. And melody came up in my heart. And that's where that song come from. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for meeting my needs. Oh, what a faithful God. You have never, never let me down. Oh, how I trust you. Day in, day out. You're always true. I thank you, Father. For meeting my needs. You know what happened? He met my needs. He met Phyllis's needs. The tuition money came. And then it came again for the next time. And it came again for the next time. And one year turned into two. And two turned into 20. Hallelujah. Another song the Lord gave me. I'd been believing for some things. And it hadn't happened. Months went by. And it didn't happen. And a year and a half went by, and it didn't happen. And it looked like we're further away from it than we were when we started. And these thoughts kept coming to me. It didn't work. It's not working. That's obvious. <laughs> and, then, and these thoughts just kept coming. You, you, you need to just forget about this. You need to just forget about this. It's not working. It didn't work. It didn't work. You need to forget about it. And Phyllis and I were going to lunch to this little restaurant and, uh, that had good pies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, and uh, when we got there, this thing had been, you know, even though you're not talking about it, something can be on the back of your mind. And that, that had been there for days. This didn't work. This didn't work. And it's not working and it's not going to work. And so I, I said, I'm, I'm going to go in here and wash my hands. And I went into the restroom and I'm, I'm standing there washing my hands. And the Lord quickened to me. He said, if it's not working, why would he be bothering you about it? Amen. I thought, huh. Come on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because what would he care? Right, right. If it ain't working, it ain't working. Why would the devil who is a known liar right, right. tell you uh-huh. it's not working? <laughs> why? 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 Because it must be working. working, and it must be working so good that if he can't get you to quit pretty soon, nothing can stop it from manifesting. And so I got excited about that. I thought, yeah, 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 it must be working. And then the song came up in my heart, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep believing. Be strong, because in a little while, 
It'll be all right. Hold on. Hold on. It won't be long till your faith will turn into sight. So I just started singing that to myself. Hold on. Hold on. Now I had a choice, didn't I? I said I had a choice. What do I do? I can say, ah, it's been nearly two years. No sign of it. I don't know of any way I could feed my fear. I could feed my doubt. I could feed my worry and wind up casting away my confidence. Right? right. Right? And millions have done it. Or, or, I can remember that in so many words, he told me, let's pass over to the other side, which means I don't start and fail. I don't go halfway and fail. We make it all the way. And sure enough, just within another two or three months, that thing came to pass, and boy, did it come to pass. It was a witness to other people around about us. Glory to God. So glad we didn't give up and quit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. 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 Go to Luke, the the 21st chapter. Luke 20, 21. We uh, read to you from Brother George Mueller that, you know, he, he started out believing God for a few pounds. This is English money. And then over a period of decades, said he could believe God for millions of pounds just as easily as those few pounds when he first started. He believed for orphanages, plural, buildings, more than enough money to feed all of them, clothe all of them, in fact, and, and, and educate them and school them. In fact, their education level was higher than anybody else's around, so much that it irritated some people. And, and, and he believed for the money, and they all believed for the money to do it. But he said, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith. And the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. He had learned that in his years of walking with the Lord and believing God. There is no place for worry and fear and doubt in the believer's life and walk. And yet, you will be tempted. Not might be. You will be tempted to fear. To worry. To doubt. Feelings will come on you. Bad reports. Hmm? Unpleasant circumstances. And when they do, you got a choice. I said you got a choice. You can collapse, you can cry, you can look at it, you can talk about it, or, or you can say, like the Spirit of God said through Paul, none of these things move me. I'm going, I'm going over, I'm going through, I'm going past, I'm going to the other side. Hallelujah. He said, Luke 21, 33, Jesus said, the heaven and the earth, I'm reading the Young's literal translation, the heaven and the earth will pass away. My words will not pass away. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts may be weighed down or overburdened, we might say, with surfeiting and drunkenness and anxieties of life. The yielding to the flesh and just fleshing out, doing everything your flesh wants to do, drunkenness and gluttony and all that kind of stuff, it, 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 it taxes your spirit yeah. That's right. That's right. And, and overburdens and overloads right. Right. your heart and faith. Right. Well, worry does the same thing. Yeah. 
there's a lot of Christians, they're not just yielding to gluttony and drunkenness and debauchery and fornication, but they're doing something that has the same effect on their heart and their faith in worry. Worry. Yielding to anxiety. He said it'll weigh your heart down. Now in Luke 22, keep going, go to the next chapter, 22 and 31, right before Jesus went to the cross, he warned his uh, disciples and Peter in particular. He said, Luke 22, 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired you that he may sift you as wheat. What does sifting do? Sifting separates things. It separates the wheat from the chaff. It separates whatever it is you're wanting to use from its impurities. Well, what's the enemy wanting to separate Peter from? <laughs> His faith. You see that in the very next, very next verse. Verse 32, but I've prayed for you. You know he ever lives to make intercession for us too? That ought have done something for you right there. <laughs> well, I need somebody praying for me. You got somebody who represents you at the right hand of majesty. Peter, excuse me, Jesus told Peter, I've prayed for you. What? What did he pray? That your faith fail not. And when, when, when? This is the same kind of thing as go over to the other side. When, not if. When you're converted, strengthen your brethren. He hadn't even messed up yet. <laughs> And the Lord's already talking about his recovery and witness and testimony helping other people. Oh. Why? Because when Jesus prayed, he prayed in faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He believed yes. that his prayer is coming to pass yes. for Peter. Yes. Oh, my. He said, I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. Now, that word fail not has to do with the same kind of idea of an eclipse. Like when the sun is eclipsed. What, why would something be eclipsed? Because something comes in between and overshadows it. And he's talking about that that could happen to your faith. And he said to them, Verse 40, just a few verses later, what did he tell them? When he was at the place, he said, pray, what? That you enter not into temptation. What temptation? In just a few minutes, they're going to be tempted to be afraid. Aren't they? They're going to be tempted to cast away their faith. We thought Jesus was going to be uh, the, the king of the country. We thought this. We thought that. And then when he let them take him away, they were confused. Yes. And they were tempted, just like Peter when he was standing out there. Oh, well, aren't you one of them? He was tempted to completely disassociate because he didn't know what was going on. Lose his faith. Oh, the enemy still wants to separate us from our faith. He still wants to sift us so that, you know, cause enough stuff to come that you just throw up your hands and just give up and quit. And so, well, I guess all that faith stuff is, I, I guess it don't work. I guess all that healing stuff, I don't know. I, I don't know. I got excited, I guess. I guess all that tithing and all that sowing and reaping, I, I don't know. I just, it does work. For those who won't quit. If you won't faint, you shall reap. If you won't cast your confidence away, you will shall experience total victory. He always causes us 
to triumph. Amen. Oh, somebody say, he always, he always causes me, me to triumph. Always. What's, what's my part though? What, what do I have to do? I have to resist the temptation to worry. Oh, it'll come. Paul said this. He's the one that penned, be careful for nothing. And then he also penned, the cares of the churches come on me daily. Well, how does that, how does that work? Just because they came on him doesn't mean he let them stay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Go to 1 Peter in closing, I think. There's a lot more we could talk about. But 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5 and 7. We'll back up to verse 6. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Defeat is not being exalted. Failure is not being exalted. He's not opposed to you being exalted. He's opposed to you doing it. <laughs> Got to let him do it. When and how he chooses. Verse 7. Casting all your care on him. For he cares for you. The NIV says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The complete Jewish Bible says, throw all your anxieties on him. Throw it. Why? Because it's, it's sticky. <laughs> Worry. It wants to stick to you. You, you got to, you got to throw it off. It'll come on you like a cloud. Hmm? You were doing pretty good, and then you saw something that you didn't like to see. You heard something. You got a bad report. You heard something bad happen to somebody that you were, you care about. What's the temptation? A cloud comes. Hmm? And if you yield to it, it's depression. It's fear. Yeah. Anxiety. And you can tell when you've yielded to the wrong thing because fear has torment. Yes. It vexes you. Yeah. It, it chews on you. Anytime you sense that, you know you have missed it. Anytime it's vexing you, it's chewing on you, it's tormenting you. You have missed it. Right. You let that in right. when you should have resisted it. Right. You chose to look at it and think about it, listen to it, talk about it when you should ref ref <laughs> refused yeah. to do so. Yeah. You've done it. I've done it. Let's stop. Yeah. Let's quit. He said, cast all your care. Somebody say all your care. If you cast all your care on him, how much care do you have left yeah. remaining? Then you would be care free. free. <laughs> if you walk in faith, and I walk in faith like we should, people won't be able to tell that we've got any issues we're dealing with. Not like we're trying to pretend that they're not there. We just have chosen to focus on the answer instead of the problem. We've chosen to focus on our healer instead of our symptoms. We've chosen to focus on the provider instead of our bills. We've chosen to focus on our faithful, gracious God instead of the mistakes our kids are making. We've chosen to look at him to whom nothing is impossible. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too hard. He heard our prayer. We believe he's granted our request. We're expecting. 
good and great things to happen in our life. So why should we be sad? Why should we cry and fall down? Why, why, why? What remains for us but praise? Praise. Praise. Verse 8, let me finish this. The very next verse, after saying, cast all your care on the Lord, what does he say? Basically, he's telling you to resist the devil. Why? Why would you need to say that? The very next verse, and this wasn't written in chapter and verse, it's all together, of casting your care. Why? Because the enemy is going to try to bring care back to you. He's going to try to bring, is that right? The worry the feelings, the anxiety, and be, be sober, be vigilant, be on the watch. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. That means he may not devour everybody. How then is he able to devour? And what's the difference, what determines who he's able to devour and who not? Verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith. That's what determines whom he may not devour. The ones who resist him, who resist the fear, resist the worry, resist the anxiety, resist it. Resist him, not just a time or two or for a day or two. Resist him steadfast. If he brings that stuff to you 50 times a day, you resist it. 50 times a day. Hmm? If he brings it to you again later, or maybe you had not even been thinking about it, but then three weeks later, here's some of that stuff comes again. You resist. You say, no, 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 no. The word's still true. I'm still healed. My needs are still met. I'm still kept. I'm still protected. I still got victory. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. There is no rare, unique situation that you're in that nobody knows anything about. That's another lie of the enemy. Right. All these things are, well, in fact, go to, go to 1 Corinthians 10. I thought this was in closing, but 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says it. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is what? Amen. See, the enemy will tell you nobody knows what you're going through. That's a lie. A lot of people have been through the same thing. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Faithful about what? He won't suffer. He won't allow you to be tempted, tested above that you're able. What does that mean? Now, some people have taken that and twisted it around and said, God won't put more on you than you can stand. That's not what this verse said. That's something somebody made up. God's not our problem. No, he won't allow you to be tempted. Well, who's the tempter? God's not the tempter. The, James says God can't be tempted with evil, and he doesn't tempt any man with evil. So this is obviously, it's not God putting something on you. This is the enemy coming and tempting you, but God is faithful. He won't allow the enemy to tempt you beyond what you can overcome and resist. What will happen is if the enemy keeps trying to push you and push you and push you and you resist, there'll come a point where the Lord said, uh-uh, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's why the temptation of Jesus didn't last 120 days. 40 days. And the Lord said, oh, that's it. That's it. He won't allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but will, with the temptation, make a way to escape. What does that mean? It means you never have to give up and quit. You never have to be defeated. There's always a way out. There's always a way to trust God. 
there's always a way to believe. There's always a way to get healed. There's always a way to get your bills paid. There's always a way to victory. Always, 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 always. Glory to God. Stand on your feet, everybody.